Recently on Twitter, I put out a, a little question saying, which micro cap or small cap stock do you think has the most upside potential? And oddly, this company wasn't mentioned. And so I'm going to cover it because I think it's probably got the most potential I've ever seen. And that's validated by three different broker targets, which could get bigger. OK, let's get into it. The content of this video does not constitute investment advice. Do your own research. If you do invest in anything mentioned in this video without doing your own research and the share price goes down, you only have yourself to blame. However, if the share price goes up and you want to give me some credit, I'm happy with that. Destiny Farmer, ticker D-E-S-T. Three separate brokers have share price targets, okay? They are Equity Development, £2.79. FinCap, 285 and short capital 290 so the average of that is 285 destiny's farmers current share price 33 pence <laughs> what now that's 750 percent upside i don't think i've ever seen broker targets that high before okay and not only this their target prices could become more than double this level if a deal is struck on their second asset I'll get into that in a bit, okay? So why such big targets? So first of all, let's step back and see what Destiny do. Uh, they are a clinical phase biotechnology company dedicated to infection prevention. The company has two late stage clinical programs and an earlier pre-clinical pipeline. The strategy is to build strong clinical data packages and then seek partners for the final clinical studies and commercialization, which is pretty much a traditional sort of uh, model by smaller sort of biotech companies because clinical trials are very expensive. I'll explain that in a bit. So this is where they are. Let's just move my bald head there. Um, a rich pipeline, de-risk assets, two products entering phase three studies. OK, so they've got MTCDM3. I'll just call that M3 going to phase three here. Okay, they've got another one here, and they've got XF73 nasal going to phase three as well. Okay, for this video, I'm just going to ignore everything else, even though you can see they've got a good pipeline there of preclinical assets. They've got two going to phase three. That's almost the final phase before commercialization. All right, so first of all, what are clinical trials? Clinical trials of drugs advance through several phases to test safety, determine effectiveness, and identify any side effects on humans okay so preclinical they're testing on other stuff and then they go to clinical trials they're testing on humans all right regulatory bodies like the fda which is probably the biggest in the world pretty much typically requires phase one two and three trials to be conducted to determine if the drug or device can be approved for further use and this is how it works um I'm going to put my head in there. So you get discovery of assets, you know, for known sort of uh, conditions. And then it goes, they test them all, all different kinds of in vitro, in vivo, so in test tube, in animal. And then it goes into clinical trials in humans, okay? Phase one, two, three, FDA approval. The further they get along this way, the less risk there is, okay? And normally you see share prices of companies rise up through these stages because it's becoming less risky and they've got more data and they've gone through several trials. So just going through them, in phase one, a small number of people who may be healthy volunteers are given the medicine. The drug is being trialled in human volunteers for the first time. Researchers test for side effects and calculate whether the, what right dose might be to use in the treatment. So there's a lot about safety at the moment, okay? Just about safety. Researchers start with small doses and only increase the dose if the volunteers do not experience any side effects or if they only experiment experience minor side effects. So a lot about safety is going to be safety and effective. That's what they're looking for. First and foremost, is it safe and then is it effective, okay? Phase two trials, um, and these take years each, these trials, you know, a year, year and a half, maybe even longer. The new medicine is tested on a larger group of people who are ill that is to get a better idea of its side effects in the short term. Destiny Pharma have two assets that have completed phase two. Okay, they've done those first two. They've gone preclinical, phase one, phase two, and now they're going to phase three. So phase three is kind of medicines that have passed phase one and two. The medicine is tested on a larger groups of people who are ill and is compared against an existing treatment or placebo to see if it's better in practice and if it is, has important side effects, okay? Trials often last a year or more and involve several thousand patients. 
And in fact, Destiny's, I think, third phase three trial on, on M3 is about 650, 700 patients. So like I said, these can take several years, these trials. I mean, probably a year, year and a half for each trial and cost a lot of money. And so uh, small companies seek partners to fund them, especially for phase three, because there's a lot more people being tested. It's a lot more expensive, all right, like Destiny have. So let's look at their first asset going to phase three. NTCD M3, a biotherapeutic prevention of C. difficile infections, okay? And that's where they are. And you see they've already partnered, announced recently. So, Clostridium difficile infection, or CDI, is a bacterial infection of the large intestine. CDI recurrence risk escalates with each episode and is linked to increased morbidity and mortality. Uh, CDI's profound economic impact on both patients, healthcare system and patients, 500,000 cases of CDI in the U.S. alone, 29,000 deaths in the U.S. alone, and it costs about $6 billion to the healthcare system. Now, if they get an infection, patients, it'll cost $40,000 and seven days are spent in hospital. So if you're infected the first time, a quarter of those people go on to get infected a second time, CDI, okay? And then beyond that, almost half get infected again, and beyond that, fourth time, more than half get infected. So each recurrence costs about $50,000 and it ends up spending 9.27 days in the hospital. So if you get four episodes of this, it's going to cost $187,000, and you'll spend 37 days in hospital. So you can see the cost is massive. Now, already, they've designed um, you know, a phase three trial uh, approved by the FDA and the European Medical, Medical Agency as well. About 650 patients. The primary endpoint is the rate of recurrence of CDI in eight weeks. Uh, and the phase three could be started uh, by the partner in 2024. So it's not going to start until 2024, okay? And then uh, commercialization in 2027. So that's how long it takes to get these things through. But, you know, we're at the end game here. They're on phase three. Uh, U.S. partner to fully fund through to commercialization. Very important, that. And so they, they teamed up with Sabala, uh, Sabala Pharmaceuticals. The agreement's worth up to 570 million. Now, they've only got a million up front first. And then success-based development milestones are 19 million going through the clinical phase three. 19 million are there. And then sales and revenue-based milestones up to 550 million and tiered double-digit royalties. So it's a very good deal, okay? Like I said, no further clinical funding required from Destiny Pharma. So that's relieved of that financial burden. Uh, Destiny also retains the majority share of the EU and the rest of the world rights M3. So this deal with Sabala pharmaceuticals is only for north america and so destiny can still do deals with other uh, companies around the world and in europe and like i said they're to fund it's about to fund all clinical studies anticipated for regular approval in the us and the eu so let's look at the uh, second late that asset because alone the share price of say 25 is based on m3 okay that's what it is so 750 percent upside on that asset alone and that's not even looking at this asset, okay? So, excess energy nasal gel for uh, infection again. And that's where they are again, phase three, okay? Um, so, Staphylococcus aureus is a bacterial on human skin and then in the nose can cause serious infection in surgical wounds. Uh, patients at high risk of risk of infection have had surgery or stay in health utilities, have medical devices in their body or inject drugs, close contact with infected patient. Now the economic burden for this is even bigger than M3. Okay? A single MSA surgical site infection costs 130k and MRSA costs over 160k. 15-day extra stay in hospital for patients with wound infections. One in three people are nasal carriers. Up to 12 times higher risk of post-surgical infections. 40 million U.S. surgical patients at risk. Annual cost complications are $10 billion. Like I said, with the M3 was six. Peak XF73 sales for prevention of post-surgical infections are 1 billion. 1 billion peak sales. And so, um, and if you look at this, it says uh, external European market research reports show that XF73 nasal gel is seen as a very promising alternative to Mipuracizumab. I can't even say that. 
essentially that's the current standard treatment okay by both clinicians and payers the study suggests exosymmetry has the potential to replace the current standard treatment as the preferred pre-surgical nasal decolonization agent an already active partnering program initiated and early discussions with potential partners have commenced they're already talking to potential partners on this Mipirosin. I tried again. Anyway, so they're in discussions on a deal on this, and they say a partner will be landed on this this year. And that, to me, is a massive catalyst for the share price going north, because it'll more than double the the NPV. Okay. So why are the share price likely to become bigger? Like I said, it's worth reading this. This is Nick Rogers, chairman of Destiny's Pharma. Uh, this is after they raised funds, after landing the deal on M3, so they've already got cash. This is what he said. They said, the net proceeds of 6.7 million have enabled the company to close our M3 collaboration with co-development agreement for the US rights with Sabella. Uh, and it will also fund the company to complete the clinical trial supply manufacturing work on M3 and progress the manufacturing and phase three clinical trial preparation for the company's other lead asset, XF73. Management net present value is 200 million for M3. Okay, that's just M3. 200 million. XF73 Nasal is wholly owned, this is still Nick, by Destiny Pharma and addresses a larger market. So its value to the company is expected to exceed that of M3 once partnered. The fundraisers give us the platform to take NS, uh, Nasal Gel to the next stage and we are very excited about this opportunity to deliver significant value for shareholders. So, look at this. M3, peak sales, 500 million, partner secured. XSME, peak sales, 1 billion, twice the size. Okay? So, if we work on that, so the, the MPV for M3 is 200. For this, it's 400, because it's twice the size, twice the potential. And these are in pounds, 159, 159 million, 318 million. Okay? Brokers give it a 280 target when the MPV is 200 million. If the MP triples to 600 million, what's the target price? So this is just guesstimations here. But if you just triple that, then you've got 2,445% upside. That's, that's crazy nuts. I know it's crazy nuts, okay? But such is the size of these markets these drugs are addressing. Unmet medical need, you know? Even these targets could get bigger. <laughs> and here's why. Remember this? 500? One billion? Okay. MT3. There's also potential for additional indications that could double the global peak sales to one billion. So it doubles N M3. The market and analysis by Desi Pharma and especially kind of support the view that XS73 could achieve annual peak sales in the US alone. And peak sales in the rest of the world could be five hundred million. So a billion in the US, half a billion in Europe and the rest of the world. That's 50% higher again. Now, I'm not going to go into the broker tar or the, the potential upside there because it's going to get silly. It's going to get like, uh, you know, 4,000% or something stupid. But for now, listen, just based on M3, right? 279, 285, 290, uh, uh, and, and 25. That's the average, okay? 33%, 750. How greedy do you want to get? That's plenty, okay? Without looking beyond. I mean, you know, but listen, it can get silly if they do you know, uh, monetize and commercialize these opportunities. can be absolutely silly. So, that's the reward. Always worth looking at the risks. All right? Now, when you're looking at loss-making, you know, companies, the most important thing of all is cash. Do they have cash? Do they have cash that can't exist? So, you can see this is the financial results just released. 7.7 7 million was, 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 um, was lost. So, that's their cash burden. But remember, they were literally, you know, um, developing two end of stage or late stage assets now the financial burden for m3 is not there anymore it's been removed because sabala pharmaceuticals are going to be fun in that so you could say the cash burden's going to come down because previously they had preclinical and clinical assets but now there's one the financial burden has been taken off them but the year of end cash of five million that's 31st of december okay and then post period actually the fundraise of 7.3 i think it was about 6.4 wasn't it net so they've got over 10 million in cash. Okay, this is a 30 what, million market cap, by the way, and a third is in cash. Uh, 
cash runway extended to H2 2024. So they have over 12 months of cash. So you're thinking, okay, what can happen in that time? What is going to happen? They've just had final results. They've just had a partnership deal. So also, by the way, a deal on XF73 likely to involve a larger upfront cash payment than M3, which will extend this runway beyond H220. They're going to land a deal, they say. They're very confident landing a deal on XF73 this year. And like I said, it's twice the potential of M3. Uh, the cash upfront payment will be bigger. Okay. So what other risks are there? Phase 3 trials not working out. You think? Maybe that could happen. Um, they're not entering those until 2024. So like months and months away from that. Where are we? April, May. So we've got seven months at least. In fact, it's not going to start, it's not gonna start on the 1st of January 2024. So longer than that. Uh, again, Phase 3 and 24. So two of those are not entering 24. So we've got seven months. What news is there then? And in fact, if you look at the, the data, I'm not going to go into this, but if you look at the data, they've said that, you know, they've got plenty of clinical data. Phase to demonstrate a strong safety toxicology profile and 95% prevention of CDI, you know, compared to, I think it was, uh, yeah, placebo. So uh, there's only a recurrence in only 5% with M3 compared to placebo of 30% which is obviously six times higher. So they've got strong data here, and on XF73 as well in Phase 3. Uh, they said they've, they've now completed over seven successful clinical trials in over 300 subjects in natal gel. Um, and they, they said yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's very strong data, basically, basically, also given qualified infectious disease product. So, you know, first and foremost, if you're worried about you know, them completing Phase 3 successfully, they've got strong clinical data that suggests it'll do well in Phase 3. But even so... You know, I mean, in fact, look at XF73. This is, this is the, the, the um, comparator in the product. Pre-op dose in five days, one day just for XF73. Uh, efficacy, not all strains. All strains is that effective against resistance buildup. Yes, no. Uh, nasal, so irritant. Y yes, it is. Non-irritant. And even the others, uh, non-irritant to uh, offer. So it seems to me it's slam dunk. You know, this is going to be commercial, this, uh, this deal. Um, so what's the news between now and phase three trials? Because you know, they've got cash. That's not a worry. Uh, phase three trials are like 12 months off, pretty much. They've got cash till then. They're going to get a deal. So basically, this is what they said in the, in the presentation. So Bala funded F3. That, so we've done that. Next, XF73 nasal partnering deal. So they put that in the presentation. They're very confident of landing that and in fact i spoke to neil and he said yeah it's, well it's, it's not a, a question of you know i mean it's like selling a house he said you know you can, you can sell it but you want the best deal you know that's it so it's not a question of will they get deals when i'll do it essentially how good it'll be and then 2024 commence xf nasal studies there that's the phase three and m3 partnering deal for the eu and the rest of the world so in my mind for the next 12 months there's going to be nothing but, you know, decent news. It's not going to be sort of uh, scary, sort of risky news. It's just going to be good news. They've got cash for over 12 months. And so all you're going to get is news on maybe a deal. Um, and, you know, other maybe peer-reviewed papers. There have been some peer-reviewed you know, peer papers come out recently. So it's all looking good. Anyway, please do your own research. Like I said, you know, it can be risky. But that's Destiny's Pharma. I hope that helped. Thank you for watching. Please do your own research. You know, investing comes with a lot of risk, especially small micro cap stocks. So, you know, do your own research. Don't overexpose if you're going to invest in small cap. In fact, in any stock, it's overexposure that can crater your portfolio. So be careful and do your own research. Thank you.